easy. So if you are eligible for foreign direct investment, that's when you can get a, a ECB done. Further, the following entities. Further, the following entities are also eligible to raise ECBs. Now, who are they? Port Trust, Units in SEZ, SI, SIDPB, and Exam Bank of India. Now, all these also are eligible to raise ECBs. Now, that was in foreign currency. In Indian currency, all entities are eligible to raise foreign currency ECBs. So, that means whatever we've studied in column number one, registered entity engaged in microfinance activities, registered not... Um, a registered not for profit companies, registered societies, trusts, and NGOs. So you have wide variety if you are taking in uh, if you are taking an ECB in Indian rupee denomination. Any doubts? It's it's a type of rupee denominated bond. So it's a type of bonds that. Uh, it's um uh, what do you say it is issued by a foreign uh, country it's their type of bonds they they issue their type of bonds based on their um, rules and regulations their government bonds and then you can buy that so they are called vanilla rupee denominated bonds so it's a foreign overseas bond type of bonds like how we have india government bonds they also have their own bonds they are called vanilla rupee denominated bonds Okay. Okay, so moving ahead. Okay. So, um, who are the recognized uh, lenders? Uh, so, you can only borrow from recognized lenders. Yeah, you, you can borrow only from recognized lenders. And who are these recognized lenders? Are none other than multilateral and regional financial institutions where India is a member country will also be considered as recognized lenders. So first, India should be a member country and then um, any multi, uh, multilateral or regional financial institutions is from where you can take it. The individuals as lenders can only be permitted if they are foreign equity holders or for subscription to bond debentures listed abroad. So basically, um, shareholders you can also take it from shareholders uh, from foreign shareholders or subscript or in case if they have subscribed to your shares or debentures or bonds abroad you can also take it from them see foreign branches subsidies of indian bank so now um, uh, say a hsbc or a hdfc you have one in india you have one branch in say singapore malaysia or something you can also take uh, loans from them you can take loans from these three types of uh, people. Now, minimum average maturity period MAMP for ECBs will be three years. Call and put options, if any, shall not be excisable prior to completion of minimum average maturity. So, uh, don't go into details of what is call and put options. Just, I mean, just move that min minimum average maturity period for ECBs is three years. Now, how does uh, a, how if you want to get ECBs, what what is the procedure that you have to apply for ECBs? All ECBs can be raised under the automatic route if they conform to the parameters prescribed under the framework. So, based on the regulations, the ECB regulations. Now, if you look at your textbook, the ECB regulations regulatory framework are three types. Uh, FEMA is there. FEMA Borrowing and Lending Regulations 2018 and you have FEMA Guarantees Regulations 2000, uh, 2000, yes. So all these three are regulated for ECBs plus you have, I think you have one more ECB also, you have their policies also. So all that under whatever these frameworks, whatever is as per the automatic route, you will have to follow that. For approval route cases, the borrowers may approach RBI with an application in prescribed format form ECB for examination through their AD Category 1 banker. Such cases shall be considered keeping in view all over, overall guidelines, macroeconomic situations and merits of the specific approval. So if it is, uh, if your company is into the approval route, approval route, you will have to uh, submit a form ECB through your AD banker and then RBI will 
only approve it based on uh, keeping in mind with all the guidelines all the situations all the prop- what proposals you're giving for what are you using it all that they'll keep in check and then only they will approve it otherwise they will not approve it but if it's under automatic route it will go through uh, if the parameters are met it will go through smoothly ECB proposals received in the Reserve Bank about certain threshold limit refixed from time to time would be placed before the empowered committee set up by RBI. Um, so basically, any ECB propo- proposal. So when they talk about ECB proposals, proposals is nothing but for automatic route. So automatic route, you propose saying that you want to raise an ECB. They will um, check the threshold limit and then they will uh, keep your proposal. um in front of the empowered committee which is set up by the RBI now the empowered committee will have external as well as internal members and RBI bank will take a final decision in the cases taking into account recommendation of the empowered committee so basically uh, there are external members there are internal members they'll all discuss and then they will decide whether they have to go ahead with this proposal or should they give the approval or not entities desires to raise ecb under automatic route may approach an ad banker with their proposal along with the duly filled in form ecb so as uh, told before you have to file an ecb you have to give your proposal to and submit it to rbi so basically you can't give it to rbi directly you will have to give it through the ad banker any doubt Can we move ahead? Yes, ma'am. New syllabus book, ma'am. Yes, this is there in the new syllabus. Okay. But there are some there there are similar points even in the old syllabus. So if you look at the old syllabus, also you should be able to um, figure it out. Okay. Uh, because all all this what I'm doing now. is been covered in the old syllabus there is a few portion in the old syllabus that's not been covered in the new syllabus so okay now once you raise ecb so ecbs are loans so once you raise ecbs you cannot use utilize it for the following activities now uh, i've put exactly what is there in the textbook so you will find similar wordings uh, because i couldn't make it short it's all point by point so one real estate activities so if you're taking um, an ecb for real estate activities you cannot use it investment in capital market you cannot use it for capital market equity investment if you you're taking loan from a foreign um, of external uh, foreign currency or indian currency from a non resident you cannot use it for equity investment working capital purposes uh, what is working capital process uh, purposes do you all know what is working capital what is working capital anybody nobody what is working capital do you all know what is working capital people you all will have to uh, reply to me then i'll know that you know you all are kind of you all are with me or sometimes i'll feel that you know nobody is listening because nobody is reply sorry ma'am it's uh, a very good money use in the business yes yes so working capital is um that is a technical uh, answer shri vishnu priya as i ali said it is something to do with you are taking a loan for the day to day business activities of the company so if you want to pay salaries or if you want to pay any vendors then you take working capital loans now um, working capital purposes you cannot be utilized except ecb raised from a foreign equity holder for working capital processes purposes general corporate purposes for repayment of rupee loan except ecb raised for working capital processes on tendering by nbfcs for working capital purposes or general, so basically whatever what that line tells us you cannot use an ecb for working capital purposes but only if you are taking from an foreign equity holder then you can use it for working capital and general corporate purposes so um 
basically in general if you are taking it from a bank if you are taking an nbfc from a bank you cannot use it for working capital purposes but if you are taking from a foreign shareholder individual foreign shareholder you can use it for working capital purposes now general corporate purposes um Again, as a similar thing uh, from from the first one, general corporate purposes for your again your day to day activities, your day to day uh, corporate um, say requirements, you use it. Repayment of rupee loans, except in case of ECB raised for repayment of rupee loans availed domestically for capital expenditure on lending by NBFCs for the same purpose. And except ECB raised for repayment of rupee, okay, it's the same, same thing that's repeated. So basically, if you you cannot take NBFCs to uh, clear out your rupee loan, but if you've taken a rupee loan domestically for capital expenditure, so capital expenditure is nothing but if you've taken loan for um, buying of machinery or buying of or fixed assets. Then you can repay the if you if you've taken the loan from a domestic bank, then you can take NBFCs. I mean, you can take um, ECBs to repay this loan. So that is possible. But you cannot uh, if you've already taken a loan from a foreign banker, you cannot use NCBs uh, ECBs to pay off that. On lending uh, to entities, the above activities except in case of ECB raised by NBFCs for working capital purposes. Okay, again, it's a copy paste of the uh, first two points. So basically, you cannot, in short, you cannot use it for real estate activities. You cannot use it for investment in capital markets. You cannot use it for equity investment. You cannot use it for working capital purposes or general corporate purposes, except. If um, if you've um, taken it from a foreign equity shareholder, now you cannot use it for repayment of rupee loan. But if you've taken a loan domestically, you can use the money to repay those loans. Any doubts? Okay. Let's move. If the person that is not used for the real estate first. And uh, if the person taking uh, from uh, foreign and, and investing in India for uh, building a, um, apartments, like no, repeat, 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 Manu. I can, I didn't, uh, I couldn't hear your question. The person uh, mm -hmm. uh, bought money from foreign, and uh, in India is uh, uh, putting everything in for building apartments. No, so what is your question? That you said capital. Uh, uh, capital market is capital. like your uh, capital market is your way I'll give you examples of capital market. Capital market is your not your um, real estate. Capital market is like your uh, debentures, bonds, derivatives, stock, something like that. Not capital assets. Those are called capital assets. If you're looking at, um, if if you're looking at, uh, one second, someone's waiting. Okay. Okay. So if you, you okay. Uh, so uh, so Manu, coming back to your question, uh, those are capital assets. Those are capital assets, uh, but if you're using it, uh, so capital market is nothing to your debentures, your bonds, those are called capital markets. What you are talking about apartments, those are capital assets. Okay. So this is only ECBs is basically, I'm a company, my company, I'm taking a loan from a foreign, um, foreign company, I say foreign bank. To, uh, for a particular purpose. Now, that particular purpose, this this is the list that you cannot use it for. So, I cannot take a loan and I, I cannot take a loan from a foreign shareholder and buy an uh, asset, um, say an apartment or uh, say factory premises. I can't use it for that. But I can't even use it to buy Share, share stock or anything like that. So real estate activities is
buying fixed assets buying apartments buying factories all of that and capital market is shares bonds so your apartment question will come in under real estate activity okay moving ahead Okay, Sayali, um, what is the role of CS role in ECBs and how to decide check if the money generating source or what is precautionary to a CS needs to take? See, uh, first thing is uh, CS roles and uh, so you have two types of roles. You are asking for um, say um, a practicing company secretary point of view or you are asking for a corporate, uh, say a corporate uh, a, a company company secretary role. What type of CS role are you talking about? Both if necessary, like in both cases if we need to generate the money. Okay, so in so in a practicing company secretary scenario, what happens is, um, say, uh, I'll, I'll, not only ECB, I'll do a general say in, in an FDI, what is the role in a CS, say in the whole getting money or if you get money or you send an ODI, FDI, all of that. Uh, what happens is um, in this situation, so you have a practicing company secretary that is as per the RBI requirements, you will need a certain uh, from time to time for every um, each amount that you're getting in the country or each amount or you're taking any ECB or you're taking any loan for everything list of documents will have more than one certifications that is required now certifications would be from a company practicing company secretary it can be from a practicing chartered accountant it will specify if it needs to be from say uh, the company is company secretary they mention uh, this certificate this declaration has to be given by the company secretary of the company uh, if it's a certificate is required from the practicing company secretary, you'll have to, you know, uh, a certificate will be mentioned saying you will have to, a uh, practicing company secretary will have to issue the certificate. Similar thing for a chartered accountant. So in that case, you, if I'm a com practicing company secretary, I will check all the documents. I will check the transactions, how much money, whether it's coming from a genuine case. Are you, um, you know, sending it to an authorized, proper authorized dealer? If money is coming in, if the FIRC's approval is there, if the money has come into a proper bank account, through a proper banking channel, if there is a board resolution, how many shares are allotted, all that has to be checked. So that is a point of view from a practicing company secretary from a corporate company secretary you are applying for uh, rbi you are applying on behalf of the company as a company secretary to the authorized dealer bank now the treasury team all of them will do the documentations but they will do it with the ed bank now in the background there are many documents that the company's company secretary will have to sign and give saying this is as per the you know FEMA regulations, as per the company act regulations, money has come in from an authorized dealer, you are authorized to issue shares, all of that, there will be various declarations, you will have to check everything, you will have to do all the paperwork. So both roles, there is work for practicing also, there is job, there is work for a corporate secretary CS also. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So once practically, say you come into um, practice or you uh, join a company and if they have foreign direct investments, if they've taken ECBs, not all companies will have FDIs, not all companies will have ECBs. But if you have an opportunity, that's when um, you will learn that, you know, what are the documentations required. Uh, so if, so if every company is different. Okay, ma'am. One second, someone else is also doing someone else. Um, yeah, so basically each company has got a different type of, um, you know, different type, say, FDI, um, say if if you join an infosys or something then you will you will you will get to work on adrs um gdr gds and all that so each company will different experience altogether so you'll probably have to learn everything in every company little by little and then you'll know 
what exactly is FDI properly fully. Okay, so that's okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's why they tell before you join a company, say for your internship, uh, I think you will have to do an internship. So make sure you join a good practice. If, if, if you want to do practicing, if you want to join uh, in a practicing company secretary role, uh, um, say make, make sure you um, join a good firm which has got an exposure to all types of uh, companies. So their clients could be all type of companies, listed companies, private companies, unlisted companies, so that you get an opportunity to learn. And if you are looking at a corporate uh, for your internships, make sure it's a good corporate company. Do a background check, see what, you know, how their shareholding pattern is, how their board of directors is, how their promoters is, and then choose your company. So, I mean, then again, you have listed company, you have a private company. If you get an opportunity in a listed company, nothing like it. You will learn more compliances. But private company also, you will learn different type mergers, acquisitions, all that is possible in a private company. So do a proper background check when you apply for internships and go in for the best, say, practice um, in for internships and even for uh, corporate also. So do your research before you join any internship firm. It's very important. Okay. So coming back to our subject. Sayal, you have any doubt? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So coming back um, to our subject now. Um, change of change of currency of ECDs from one freely convertible foreign currency to another con freely convertible foreign currency as well to Indian rupee is freely permitted. Now change of currency from Indian rupee to any freely converted foreign currency is not permitted. So that means uh, I've taken an ECB from uh, US. So I've taken an ECB as in US dollars. I want to convert it for some reason. I want to convert the US dollars to pounds. Is that possible? Yes, that is possible. Can I convert USD to Indian Rupee? Yes, it is possible. Now, but if I've taken the ECB in Indian Rupees and I have to convert it into foreign uh, US dollars, that is not possible. So if it is um, USD, if I want to convert it into pounds, it is possible. If, I, if I've if i already taken an Indian Rupee uh, ECB, I cannot convert it into foreign currency. So that is the... Um, uh, what do you say? That is a requirement where you can, um, what you can, if you want to convert foreign currency uh, ECBs, that's what you can do. Issuance of any type of guarantees by Indian banks, um, all Indian financial institution, NBFCs relating to ECBs is not permitted. So basically guarantee is say one, uh, one bank gives to another bank saying that um, uh, this person will uh, pay off all the loan um, on time, pay off all the installments on time. So you cannot take any guarantee from Indian banks or Indian financial institutions and NBFCs relating to ECB is not permitted. Okay, ECB proceeds are permitted to be parked abroad as well as domestically in the manner given below. So basically, um, if you want to, so the money has come in money has come into your company you can keep the money abroad you can keep the money in the country so parking of ecb proceeds abroad is keeping the money abroad and keeping the ecb proceeds domestically so you keep the money whatever you've taken as loan in your indian bank account that is point number two parking of ecbs domestically and abroad is nothing but keeping it in your foreign bank account now, ECB proceeds meant for foreign currency expenditure can be parked abroad pending utilization. So basically, if you have any expenditure, so uh, my company is, um, say I have a branch in Singapore and I'm taking an ECB in Singapore dollars. So then what happens? I don't have to bring the foreign currency into India because it is required for my Singapore branch. So what happens is I keep it for uh, I keep it in the foreign uh, in Singapore bank account for any expenditure for that particular branch of my company. So I don't have to bring it into the country again, send it. So I keep it in my foreign bank account. So that is nothing but parking of ECB proceeds abroad. 
retail utilization, these funds can be invested in the following liquid assets. A, deposits or certificate of deposits. So basically your FDs, all of that, you can deposit the money. Again, um, it says products offered by banks not less than, uh, you know, a particular rating that's uh, by Moody's. Treasury bills. So if you want to convert the ECBs that you've taken into treasury bills or a monetary instance, of one year minimum uh, of one year maturity you need to have a minimum rating treasury bills and other uh, deposits with foreign banks of indian branches abroad so if you want to take ecbs and uh, keep it into um, keep it uh, as a, a deposit as an fd in a foreign bank account say an HDFC or a HSBC or something that is possible. So there are three ways that you can utilize your foreign funds if you do not want to use it immediately. Okay, so in short, uh, what is parking of ECB abroad is if I'm keeping, if I have taken ECBs into Singapore currency for my Singapore branch, I keep it in the foreign bank only. I can keep, I can use those funds, I can put deposits or certificate of deposits. I can use it for treasury bills or any monetary inst uh, instruments, maturity, one year minimum, uh, maturity of one year, minimum rating is as per the requirements and deposits with foreign branches or subsidies. So basically FDs can be put but abroad only. So that money does not come into India. Now, what happens if you want to bring the ECB's uh, currency into country? ECB proceeds meant for rupee expenditure should be repatriated immediately for credit to their rupee accounts with AD banks in India. So, if you're getting um, ECB's in rupee, uh, if, if it is in INR, if it is in rupee, you need to get it through your AD banks in India immediately. So, you cannot, um, you cannot keep it... Uh, if you're taking it in Indian currency, you cannot keep it abroad for a long time. Now, ECBs are allowed to park ECBs proceeds in term deposits with AD banks for a maximum period of 12 years cumulatively. So now I've got the money into India and uh, I can put it in term deposits for a maximum period of 12 months. These term proceeds should be kept un encumbered position so you cannot uh, have any encumbrance uh, with that so it will be in term deposits will be in in, in uncumbered positions so any doubts anybody's what got any news what, what is moody's moody's so, um so moody's is a company uh, that gives ratings you would have um Okay. You would have this similar to the uh, uh, PwC or something? Is it no. on the same lines? No, no. Um, have you heard of um, wait, with this and other company? So you 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 would have heard the news that uh, you know the Indian uh, say this particular company or in Indian economy has been uh, you know rated by Moody's. There is a low uh, low economy for this company, or you know this company is got a very poor rating because of their demerger activities. Have you heard of all that? Malini, have you heard, um, say, news articles like that, saying uh, Moody's has... Um, Moody's not has... that I can collect, ma'am. No, not that I can collect. So basically, they give ratings. Uh, there is an there's another company as well. I'm not sure what is that name. Uh, I'm sure that you would have heard of. One second. Credit rating. Ah, Crystal. Have you heard of Crystal? Crystal Rating Agency. You've heard of them? Yes. That. Moody's is something like Crystal. Okay, ma'am, okay. So basically, if your rating is high, that's when the banks are going to give you, if, if the rating is a particular good rating, A, they have A, B, C, all that. Only if your rating is good, that's when the banks are going to give you loans. Otherwise, the bank will not give you so much of loans. So it's, it's a rating company. 
Okay, anybody, anybody, anybody has any doubt? Okay, let's move ahead. Um, so you need to report. Now you need a loan registration number. You need to, uh, so if uh, you want an ECB, you need to apply for your loan registration number. You need to form a submit form ECB to the RBI. Now, um, any, so ECB, so basically it is, um, say, it, you'll have certain terms and conditions. If there is any changes in the terms and conditions, you will have to report it to the Department of Statis Statistics and Information Management through revised form ECB, not less than seven days from the changes affected. So um, any terms, say any interest rate or any uh, payment period or any, um, say any, you know, you are giving any fresh, uh, what do you say charge has been created any terms any change any change in their terms and conditions percentage of interest that you're going to pay or you know when you're going to close any changes you will have to inform you'll within seven days inform ECB now again if you have taken any ECB you need to uh, monthly you need to do report of the transactions so what all transactions you have done with the ECB, you'll have to submit a form ECB to, it's it's a return, you'll have to uh, submit it to AD Bank on monthly basis. Now again, this will um, be submitted through the AD Bank to the Department of Strategic, uh, Statistics and Information Management within seven working days of the close of the month. So if the month is 30th, within, seven, within seventh of uh, the next month, you will have to submit your ECB to return. Now, late submission fees, LSF for delay in reporting. Now, if you have not done any reporting as per the ECB guidelines, you will have to submit, um, you will have to pay a late submission fees and you will have to submit a late submission fees. Now, what happens is, um, if you do not pay this late submission fees, your next ECB uh, return, or your ECB requirements will not get processed by the uh, AD banker. They will stop it. Now, standard operating procedures for untraceable entities. What do you think are untraceable entities? What are untraceable entities? Something like contravention of uh, Repeat, Manoj. Um, something like some entities are in a contravention of reporting. Contravention of reporting, okay. Yes, uh, okay, they they have not done the uh, reporting provisions as per the requirements. But what are untraceable entities? Now, if if my if my company say company A has not done a particular thing, I will pay late submission fees and I'll report it. But when does my company A become untraceable entities? Tracker ID is not available. What is not available? Tracker ID. Can you repeat, please? Tracker ID. Tracker ID. What tracker ID? Like uh, uh, for the documents, some. Uh, ID, like number will be there, right? With the uh, recognition uh, name or any uh, approval letter. Okay. That, uh, th that is not available. Okay, yeah, no, something like uh, 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 activities are not done in a long period now. One kind of entities. Activities are not done in a long period, yes. Anybody has got any other point of view for untraceable entities? And the dormant companies, no ma'am. Uh, if, if, if it's a dormant company, then why, why will they apply for ECBs? Dormant companies, you will not apply for ECBs, no? When they go off the radar completely, when they probably change the address or when they're not contactable at all. Yes, yes. Not if companies are not um, found in the, you know, the particular registered office. Or say what happens is if they've submitted forms. 
if they have submitted uh, if uh, they have submitted their ecb forms now they have done changes in terms and conditions but they have not in they have not filed a revised revised form monthly reporting they did for two months after that they have stopped monthly reporting they have not paid late submission fees also then what happens then you will untraceable entities are people so basically the ad bank will find out you know why this company has not submitted their monthly transactions report why this form is not filled why that form has not filled so basically if they try to you know uh, give um, communications give notices give reminders saying you've not submitted your returns you've not submitted this you've not submitted that and they still don't reply they are untraceable plus if they have not submitted statutory auditor certificate for the last two years so then there is a requirement say whenever uh, you have submitted uh, your documentations you need to file returns from time to time and you've not submitted your auditor certificate also so that time you will they also come under untraceable entities now what happens then um so if my company has become untraceable and then i realize okay i had to do it i have not um uh, file my form ecb so i will have to file a revised form ecb i'll have to file and you know submit my last ecb to return i don't have to submit a fresh ecb application i need to submit it to the doctorate of enforcement and uh, i should inform them and uh, no money can if if um uh what do you say um no inward remittance will be allowed in auto mode so every time whenever i am making an inward remittance of ecbs i will have to take the approval from the rbi and that's when i can get the money so that is like um um requirement if my entity becomes if company a becomes uh, untraceable i'll have to file a revised form i'll have to submit the last ecb form um i'll have to submit uh, you know to the enf uh, enforcement directorate i should inform them why i went uh, absconding and i cannot get any inward remittance without approval any doubts any plans so no remittance won't be permitted unless the revised forms are filed yes so until the revised forms are filed yes and any future uh, inward remittance of okay um ma'am there are like revised form ecps right because it's over a period of time so how does that work uh can you repeat your question um are there like revised so sometimes ecbs are um monthly um reported right so you it's put that there's going to be form ecb 2 so how exactly does that work see if um okay see so ecbs you are taking a loan in one go now i have taken a loan for 10 crores i have taken a loan for 10 crores every month i need so when i want to take a loan i need to submit form ecb yeah and, and every month i need to report the actual transaction of what i am doing um using this money then i will be submitting a form ecb 2 every month it's it's so it's basically like an annual return it's a monthly return that i have to file with the ad bank within 7 days on what actual i am doing with this money mm -hmm. so that's okay. your monthly reporting of the trend of the okay. transaction yes i'm interested and if there's any terms and condition changes i will have to file a revised ecb ecb is the original form so i'll have to file a revised revised original form okay so you can you convert uh, ecbs into equity so that is conversion um, from ecbs to equity the activity of borrowing company is covered under automatic route for fdi or government approval is a c wherever applicable for foreign equity participation as per extract for fdi policy so basically you have taken ecb you have taken an ecb loan now what happens is sometimes companies cannot pay the ecb loan so they will tell okay instead of paying the uh, no if i have taken a 10 crore loan 
they'll tell I cannot um, uh, pay back the 10 crore loan. Can I give you shares in my company? So that time what happens is you convert your 10 crore ECB loan into say 1 lakh of equity shares. Is that possible? It is possible. If it is uh, an automatic route, it is no approval is required. But if it is under government route, you will have to see uh, whether um, you fall into uh, whether you've got all your um, FDI approvals and then you can convert it into equity share. So basically from ECB requirements, you will have to follow the FDI requirements. The conversion, which should be with the lender's consent and without any additional cost. So um, say if I've taken a dollar loan from uh, a company in Dubai, I will have to take their consent if they are okay to convert the loan, my 10 crore loan into uh, shares, I will have to take their consent and then I will have to convert it into equity shares. Now, if there's any additional, I should not charge uh, the lender any uh, additional uh, cost. So basically conversion cost should not be given to the lender. The company will have to bear any additional cost for conversion. Applicable pricing guidelines for shares are complied. So we saw FDI uh, pricing guidelines, fair market value, all of that. So based on that only, you will have to uh, issue the shares and the prices have to be uh, converted into properly as per the required guidelines. Reporting to RBI. So if you decide to convert your ECBs into equity, you have to report it to RBI. Borrower concerned has availed of other credit facilities from Indian banking system, including foreign branches subsidy of Indian Bank. The applicable guidelines issued by the Department of Banking and Regulations, including guidelines on reconstruction, are complied with. So basically, anything that you have taken foreign banks, anything, you will have to comply all credit facilities uh, on recons. Uh, so basically, the entire set of conversion ECB into equity is called reconstruction. So you will have to follow those guidelines. Consent of other lenders, if same to the same borrower, is available. At least information regarding conversions is exchanged with other lenders of the borrowers. So if I have taken multiple loans from multiple banks, uh, say. E Normal loans also if I've taken, if I've taken ECBs from two, three banks, I will have to inform all of them that I'm converting this particular ABZ bank into equity shares. I'll have to inform all the other banks about the conversion. The exchange rate prevailing on the date of the agreement between the parties concerned for such conversion or lesser rate can be applied with the mutual agreement with the ECB lender. So basically for conversion is the exchange rate as on that day of the uh, agreement or it can be less based on a mutual agreement. It may be noted that the fair value of the equity shares to be issued shall be worked out with reference to the date of conversion only. So how much ever money um, you are using for conversion, you have to take note of the uh, exchange rates also. So. This, these are the requirements if you want to convert a, a ECB um, ECB to equity. Anybody's got any doubt? No. Anybody's got any doubt? Okay. Let's move ahead. Okay. ECB facilities for startups. So, yes, Vidyashi. Any doubt? Okay. Let's move ahead. Okay. Uh, startups are nothing but, uh, say, um, like your Swiggy, your um, Zomato. Zomato was a startup at a point of time, but Swiggy can be called a startup. Uh, so what happens is, uh, can ECBs be taken for startups? We'll see that. AD category banks raise ECBs under automatic route as per the following framework. So you can um, take the help of the uh, AD bankers. You have to go through the AD bankers. And if the company is under automatic route, you can take it, but you have a particular requirements. Now, who is eligible? 
uh, entity recognized as a startup by the central government as on date of raising an ECB. So you need to be recognized. So there is a certificate that you need to obtain uh, at the time of incorporation. You are a startup company, so you need to be recognized by the central government that you are a startup. Maturity minimum average maturity period will be three years. For a startup, minimum average maturity period will be three years. Recognized lenders. From whom can you take? Lender investor shall be a resident of the FATF compliant company. Now, what is FATF? Foreign Action Task Foreign? Ah, okay. Manoj, can you repeat, please? Action Task Force, ma'am. Foreign Action Task Force. Okay. Financial action task force. Financial action, yes. Financial action task force. So there are various companies that are part of uh, this particular uh, FATF. So you need uh, the lender should be a part of that country. Uh, however, foreign subsidy branches of Indian branch and overseas entities in which the Indian entity has made overseas direct investment as per the extract overseas direct investment will not be considered as recognized lenders under this framework. So, if you've done any over, uh, overseas direct investment into um, your Indian branches or overseas Indian entities, then uh, you cannot take, uh, you cannot consider that particular bank as your lender. Firms. The borrowing can be in form of loan or non-convertible, optional convertible or partially convertible preference shares. So basically two types only, loans or preference shares. Now preference shares can be non-convertible, optional convertible or partially convertible. You all know what is convertible preference shares? Are you all aware of what is con preference share convertible say partially non-convertible preference shares? Converting preference shares into equity shares. Yes, that is convertible preference shares. Uh, so non-convertible is something that you cannot convert. Optional convertible means they'll give you an option whether you want to convert your preference shares to equity shares. So you have an option of saying yes, no. Partial convertible means uh, half of the shares will be converted into preference shares. Do you all know what is preference shares? Can someone explain what is preference shares? What is the difference between equity shares and preference shares? Anybody? What are preference shares? Anybody? Just one second. Oh, what, what are preference shares? Anybody? What are equity shares? It receives fixed rate of dividend in respect of profit on OK, uh, but basic. That is a little bit ahead. But basic difference between who, who is more important? Okay, let's ask you this. Who is given more importance? Equity shares or preference shares? Preference shares. Preference shares are, they have priority over equity shares. So at, at the time of, uh, say, at the time of closure of the company, who will get uh, money first? Preference shares or equity shares? Preference shareholders. Preference shareholders. So they are given more preference in terms of when you're closing the company or when, um, uh, say, when payment of dividend, as Sri Vishnu Vashni had said, preference shares will receive fixed uh, percentage of dividend. Equity shareholders might not even get dividend every year, but preference shareholders will. Preference shares, you can easily convert it into equity shares. Sometimes it is not convertible. So they have more importance than equity share holders. It's more of like a loan, like a debenture, like you're taking a loan from this particular shareholder, but it's not literally a loan, but it they kind of treat them like that. Currency. The borrowing should be denominated in any freely convertible currency or in Indian rupees. So again, 
uh, it can be in US dollars, it can be in uh, Singapore dollars, all that can be done. Or you can take the ECB in Indian rupees. In case of borrowing in INR, the non-resident lender should mobilize INR through swaps, outright sale under through the AD bank. So whatever comes should come through a proper channels. Amount. The borrowing per startup will be limited to USD 3 million or equivalent per financial year. So per financial year, you can only borrow 3 million or equivalent. Means USD 3 million. So if you convert it, if you're taking it from Singapore dollars or something, you can convert it and use it. Now you can take it in foreign currency or you can take it in national currency or you can take half and half. Say half uh, 1.5 million you can take it in USD and the remaining you can take it in INR. All in cost shall be mutually agreed between borrower and lender. So whatever cost is there between both of them should equally be divided. I mean basically they can discuss and decide who the cost shall be borne by. End uses for any expenditure in connection with the business of the borrower. So you can use it for any month, any um, expenditure that you want. If you want to buy fixed assets, you want to buy, uh, um, you want to spend it on working capital, you want to spend it on um, Credit to the lender is left to the borrowing entity. Security can be in the nature of mobile, immobile, tangible assets, financial securities, etc., and shall comply with the FDI or FPI or any other norms applicable for foreign lenders. Personal and corporate guarantee is not allowed. So basically, if you are taking, um, uh, if you're taking um, a loan from any bank, you will have to give some uh, security or the other. So here also you will have to give security. It can be in anything, mobile, immobile, tangible, uh, your financial securities, your um, receivables, um, you know, your fixed assets, so your uh, missionary, your building, your uh, office premises, your how much uh, receivables you have to reduce, give your IP rights, everything can be given as security for ECBs. Now you cannot give a corporate guarantee, you cannot give a personal guarantee of any director, you cannot, the company cannot give any guarantee, any, any other company cannot give any guarantee, that is not allowed. Hedging. The overseas lender in case of INR denominated ECB will be eligible to hedge its INR exposure through permitted derivatives products with a, um, AD bankers in India. The lender can also access the domestic market through branches subsidy of Indian branches. Presence back to back startups raising ECB in foreign currency whether having natural hedge or not are exposed to current currency risk due to exchange rate movements and hence are advised to ensure that they have appropriate risk, risk management policy to manage potential risk out of ECBs. Now what happens is um, if an overseas lender is giving an INR, you can hedge the uh, amount to... Uh, so what is hedging? Can someone explain what is hedging? It's a risk management uh, method. Yes, where you buy and sell uh, yes. shares, share stocks. Now that is allowed. You need to have a proper risk management policy in the start to ensure that you do not get too affected with the currency or with the exchange rate uh, requirements. Conversion rates. In case of borrowing in INR, the foreign 